Welcome to Reaching Out. We've got an interesting program lined up for you this morning. We're going to talk about the will of the Father. We all pray that prayer, thy will be done on earth that is in this heaven. Do we really want God's will? Do we really want to walk in his shadow? Do we really love him to the point that we are going to walk in his will? We all say we believe, but do we really believe? And what do we really believe? I think if we wanted to do something for all of us, and if I had a homework assignment for you, it would be take a sheet of paper and write down on a sheet of paper 10 things in the Bible you believe. 10 things in the Bible you believe. We all believe in the Son of God, okay? We all believe in the Trinity. There we got two. We all believe we can pray. We got three. Now what do we believe? Mustard seed. Mustard seed. I believe that. Faith of a mustard seed will cause something to happen. Unconditional love. Can you love the unlovable? Oh, mercy, mercy, mercy. I don't want to unlove the unlovable. They stink. No, they're a the wrong race. Nope, they talk funny. No, I can't love them. They did this. No, I can't love them when they're, because they did that. Who can you love? You see, we have set ourselves up to become a totally, a totally, I don't know what the term, I don't know what the term is, but what do you really believe? Do you really believe the Bible? God says that every word in the Bible is going to come to fruition. In John 1, it says, 1 to 15, it says, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus was the word. And Jesus was God. Every word in the Bible is God's will. And we have fallen short of that. I don't care who it is. We have all fallen short of that. Recently I had a shock that I almost fell off my, I almost fell off my stool. I couldn't hardly believe it. This man gets up, he says, I've been a pastor for 40 years preaching Christ. He says, I'm going to try the next 40. I'm going to be an atheist. He never believed one word that he preached. So with all that, with that as the introduction to this, that will be done. I'm going to read you a few verses. This is God's will also. Haggai 2, 4 to 9. We've got a Bible, look it up. Be now, be strong, Zerubbabel declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jodak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remained among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. <coughs> People prophesy over that. They say, well, we're going, to have, we're going to have peace and prosperity and all of these good things. But you know what? There's a couple things that, are going to, that we don't look at very close. I will shake the heavens and the earth. I would encourage everyone to go on YouTube, go on the Australia, uh, Australia News Channel, go to BBC, and to a lesser degree, go to the news channels in the United States and see what's happening around the world. You have the biggest drought that they have ever seen in the continent of Africa. We have seven states that are completely dried up. And the big argument now is who gets the water out of the Colorado River because they have reduced, the federal government has reduced water usage by 25%. One group of, of farmers there, they have 600,000 acres, 
of vegetable crops they couldn't plant. North Mexico is in a severe drought. Europe is in a drought. And we go all around the country. Now let's look at this. I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. We go to Yellowstone and we find out that the Yellowstone, the bubble on top of the volcano, is four feet higher now than it was a few years ago. And it's coming up. Are we ready for God's shaking? It's going to come to pass, just like he said. But Haggai prophesied it. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 26. Now we see that we have received an unshakable kingdom. God's kingdom is unshakable. God's kingdom will take care of you. Everything apart from God's kingdom will be shaken by God, and God will shake all things that can be shaken. He will shake the heavens, the earth, the nations, and only in his Father's house will it not be shaken. Get anchored in the, in the kingdom of God because there are times coming that we don't want to see. But if we're walking in God's shadow and we're walking next to his heart, we don't have to worry about being shaken with anything. Isaiah 13, 13 says, Therefore I'll make the heavens tremble. And will the shirt, earth will be shaken from its place at the fury of the Lord in the day of his burning anger. Scientists tell us that the earth is two or three degrees off kilter right now. Back when they were blowing up the atomic bombs that they talked about this. And when it gets off kilter, if you've ever been around a wheel that you're balancing on a balance machine, it'll start to vibrate. And when it starts to vibrate, what happens to the mud that's on the tire? It shakes off. What happens to the water that's in the oceans? It splashes out. What happens to the crust of the earth? It cracks. <coughs> Science says it's going to happen. God says it's going to happen. And we're experiencing it to happen. In western Wisconsin here, we sit in a wonderful bubble. We have beautiful weather. We have plenty of rainfall. We have fantastic crops. And we can water our lawns. You go west, you can't do that. They got no water. They're just a few feet from the, the generators not working. So, when the generators don't work from Lake Mead and Lake Powell, then what are we going to do? We are going to tap the electricity off of the other grades from the Midwest, from the South. And when we tap the electricity off from the other grades, now we're situated with, well, we might have a brownout. We might not have electricity 24 hours a day. It's coming, folks. I don't care what the prophecies are or what people will tell you. I'm going to go by what the Word of God says. Let me just say it again. Then we're reading out of Haggai again. I will shake all the nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory. You know what happens when the things start shaking? People start looking up. People start looking up. I'm going to ask this question. I don't know if this is a true story or not. I was told by two different people that didn't know each other that they had seen this in the news and somebody needs to pursue it and see if it's true. There was a lady in a, in a car accident. She got caught in a crash. She got caught in the fire. It took a couple hours to get the fire and to get cleaned out. They picked her up, put her in a body bag and took her to the morgue. At the morgue, the body bag stood up and a woman got out of the bag. That's what's coming. That's what's coming, folks. The power of God. The power of God is coming. It's not a religious exercise. It's not, you can't conjure it up. You have to have faith and we have to put our egos away. 
We have to put our foolishness away. And we have to start walking in God's shadow. Ezekiel 13, 13. So this is what the Lord God said. I will release a wind storm in my wrath. Torrential rain will come in my anger and hailstones will fall in destructive fury. They had hail all over Europe the size of baseballs. Completely wiped out some areas. We had some of this in central, uh, the central part of the United States. And we've seen it around the world. Are we ready for God to shake the world? If we had a hailstorm come through this area like this, think about what you would have. The cornstalk would look like a cane. The roofs would look like somebody shot him with a shotgun. Break all the windows, break all the windows in the cars. This is what the Lord God says. I will release a windstorm. Whoever heard of 100 mile an hour winds in the Midwest, but we had them last year. Are we ready to be shaken? Are we ready to look up? If we look up, the glory will be greater than the former glory. If we don't look up, the damnation will be greater than anything we can imagine. Ezekiel 38, 19. This one is prophetic. I'm going to read this and then we're going to come back to a couple of these other verses. In my zeal and fiery rage, I proclaim that on that day there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. Israel sits on a fault and the prophecy in the, in the Jewish Bible is that the earthquake will come, split the temple mount, and the water out of Temple Mount will flow down the Kidron River into the Dead Sea and the sea will come alive. Watch for that. That's prophetic for the future. How about this one here? Isaiah 2.9 Men will flee to caves in the rocks and holes in the ground. How many times have you seen somebody advertising Survival. Go on YouTube and look at them. You can get whole plans how to how to survive. Should I read this again? Men will flee to caves in the rocks and holes in the ground. They're doing it all over the United States. Million dollar bunkers. Away from the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of his majesty when he rises up to shake the earth. They're building bomb proof shelters because God is on the shake. Think about that. You ever think about that? He's shaking it. We're digging holes in the ground. We need to bury a container. We need to make them steel. We need to make them bomb proof. We need an AK-47. We better have a couple of AR-15s. You're just kidding. You're just kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. Well, yeah. That is not going to protect you. What will protect you and bring you back to the glory of God is your faith in who and what He is. That's the only thing you have got. That's the only thing that will not be shaken. And if He has to provide, if He has to provide water out of the rock, He will to His people. He did it before, and He'll do it again. If he has to multiply the food. So if you're listening on a video, you're in a church and you haven't committed yourself to walking in God's kingdom, get off of your dead butt and do it. It's the only hope you have got or you're going to be shaken right out of the 
right out of the kingdom. Yes. Are you ready for the next verse? Luke 21. Men fainting from fear and the expectation of the economy breaking, of the drought, of starvation, of not having enough food. The number one killer for the, and I'm, I'm going to say middle class American, is heart attack from fear. The number one killer. How many people have to die before they get done turning their back on the Lord? Let me read the rest of that verse. Men fainting from fear and the expectation of things which are coming upon the world for the powers of heaven will be shaken. It's coming. These aren't birth pains. These are shaking. God is sifting his people. You think you're going to miss it? No. There ain't anybody in this room that's going to miss it. You're all going to be a part of it. So we want to go to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Every verse that I read you is a part of God's plan, a part of God's prophecy. What does the will of God contain? Anything that has supernatural qualities and is a blessing to others. This is for us. Including but not limited to love. Sometimes tough love, kindness, compassion, sharing, empathy, carrying the burdens for someone, healing, praying for someone. Many times we will not recognize it until years later. We need to turn our back on what this world is feeding us. And we need to start embracing the kingdom of God. Second Peter 3 9 says, The Lord is not slack in concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Don't be foolish. Understand what the will of the Lord is. I just read you six or eight verses about the will of the Lord. Thy will be done. I will shake the world. I will shake the earth and everything in it. And for the faithful, my glory will be better at the end than at the beginning. That's the promise of God. And that's why we need to walk in His shadow. We need to walk right close to Him. I don't know any other way to say that. Because a lot of people, there's a lot of wannabe prophets out here. Oh, we're going to have peace and prosperity. There's a great revival coming and so on and so forth. Yeah, I'll tell you when the revival will come. When God shakes the world so much, the ocean runs out of its, out of its basin and runs over half the land. No ice caps melt and New York is flooded. When the West is dry. California falls in the ocean. I was looking at the San Andreas Fault. They actually have that line right across. You can see it. When they flew drone down the line, you could follow it right down the line. And the guy's out there. He's standing one foot on one side. This is the United States. This is the ocean. There's nothing under that. It's going to, if it cracks, it's going down. We don't believe science. We don't believe the word of God. Mount Rainier, I trained on Mount Rainier. It's building ahead of steam now. You know where it's at. We can see it from our house. God is shaking the world. We have more volcanoes. We have more tornadoes. We have more storms. We have more of all of these things. And nobody is looking up. 
They're all looking at the beer tents and they go into casino. We have to start looking up because that's where the power is. There's nothing wrong with being going to your tents at casino. Why do we go there? To bury our misery, because we're afraid to look up. I shared this at the outset, I'm going to, I'm going to close with this too. How could somebody serve the Lord for some 40 years and then get up and say, well, it didn't do me any good, so I'm going to serve the devil? I'm going to be an atheist. How could, how could somebody do that? But they can. I want to say to everyone that's been listening to this broadcast, look it up, because that's where your salvation is. God is going to shake this world like it's never been shaken, and He's going to shake every country. It doesn't make any difference what country you are, or how big, how big a hole you've got in the ground. It's going to happen. The only salvation is looking up and making Jesus Christ the Lord in your life. Don't be afraid to do that and do it today. Just look up and say, Lord God, I just make you, I make you the Lord of my life. Show me, teach me, tell me what you want me to do. And he will direct you and he will protect you no matter how hard your country or your community shakes. God bless you. It's been a wonderful day. Thank you.